July 16, 2019 meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. We welcome all of our guests. The meeting is now called to order. Commissioners Murray and Jenkins will lead us in the invocation and the pledge. Please stand. Dear Father, thank you for today. Thank you for everyone in this room. Be with us as we go through our meeting. Bless our words and give us discernment. And may we do what's best in your sight in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. We go in the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, commissioners. Please be seated. There were a couple of minor corrections that we made to the minutes in members present and a spelling, so that has been corrected. Are there any additional corrections? Hearing none, we'll all call for a motion to approve. We'll make a motion we approve minutes of breath. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Now I will read our order of business this evening. Approval, approve consent agenda. Pr approve consent agenda. I'll get this out in a minute. The items on the consent agenda are plats that meet the requirements of the City of Longview Subdivision Ordinance. These items will be approved with one vote unless any member of the Planning and Zoning Commission, any member of the public, or the applicant would like an item removed from consent and placed on the regular agenda for discussion. On our regular agenda, the purpose of that meeting is to hear all pertinent testimony of those in support of and in opposition to the applications before the board. Tonight is the first of two public hearings required to approve a change in zoning. The board also considers plats. The procedure for public hearing items to be followed tonight will be, the public hearing will be opened and testimony will be heard in the following order. Number one, the applicant, second staff, and third, the general public. And that would include those in support and those in opposition to the request. If you're part of a large group with a common interest, we ask that you appoint a spokesperson rather than each individual restating the same information. When addressing the board, please begin by stating your name and address and try to limit your comments to five minutes. When all sides have spoken, the public hearing on the matter will be closed and no public further public discussion will be entertained. After each public hearing is closed, the board will vote on the request. Zoning requests and the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation will go forward to the second public hearing, which will be conducted by the City Council on August 8, 2019. Thank you. We do have a consent agenda item tonight, a consent agenda, agenda A. May I hear a motion? Move to approve. We have a motion to approve. A second? Se second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Any opposed? None opposed, thank you. The motion carries. To the regular agenda, agenda item A. The staff, please. Thank you. A public hearing will be held to consider application Z19-09 filed by Casey Crocor requesting a rezone from plan development PD45 to single family zoning district SF2 for approximately 1.635 acres of abstract 117 William Robinson survey tract 64 section 7 located on the east side of Bill Owens Parkway and south of Ben Hogan Drive. Thank you. The applicant Please come forward and give us your name and address, sir. Yes, my name is Casey Cockrell. I'm the director of Southern Survey, representing Cart Path Only LLC. My address is uh, P.O. Box 246, White Oak, Texas, 75693. And um, we presented this uh, item last month, and um, I'm thankful that your apprehension has requested additional information um, some of the issues that were brought up last month were that um, the history of title development of this property has a history of developing tracks in succession and so this this really wasn't that wild of a of an application or, or presentation I I kind of expected it just to kind of roll on through. Um, so some of the issues brought up by the adjoining landowners were uh, 
if a residence was built in this area, it would apprehend their view of private property, which um, there are currently um, no visibility easements encumbering uh, part, um, cart path only LLC's property. So that, that was an issue. Another issue was they, they, the, they thought that um, there was an access agreement in the covenant restrictions of Oak Forest Edition Unit Number Four to allow egress, trespass onto cart path only, and, and that's that's not an issue. And so the other the other issue that really kind of came up that kind of pushed this from being uh, approved was uh, visibility on Bill Owens. Um, and on this this uh, exhibit, I made another revision that showed the adjoining lot one. Oh, no, it's on there. I'm sorry. Um, a private driveway from lot one Oak Forest block 6009 onto Bill Owens. But the issue was visibility of a private drive coming onto Bill Owens at the bottom of a hill where um, there was vegetation along the creek and... Um, I'm not real sure about the uh, speed limit there, but it, it was mainly a safety issue from traffic point of view that kind of pushed this an, another month. And so I'm not real sure if Mr. Vogel's here. I am. He, this is the general manager of the challenge, and um, he could probably answer more questions about their plans to improve visibility at that area and any input from the city of Long Beach planning and zoning uh, I, I don't do traffic analysis uh, other than there is a contemporary driveway in this exact same spot um, coming on to Bill Owens. Um, the last last month there was a lot of, a lot of concern about danger of pulling on to Bill, Bill Owens or, or exiting or what, uh, traffic there. So, but I really don't have an input on any of that other than all of this is complied um, and, and is pretty normal for cart path only LLC. This is just a very uh, special case because of the hill there at uh, Bill Owen. So if, if uh, somebody else would like to. Okay, do you have any questions of Mr. Cockrell, commissioners? Not at this time, thank you. Staff. Thank you. Uh, the applicant is requesting a rezone um, from PD 45 to single family to uh, this item was postponed from the last meeting, planning and zoning meeting. Uh, staff um, uh, did talk to our city engineer and traffic engineer to review this site based on the comments from the previous meeting. Uh, both of our traffic engineer and city engineer, both of them concluded that the visibility is about 230 feet uh, due to the vertical and horizontal curvature of Bill Owens Parkway. Uh, the reverse curve of the street makes the visibility extremely limited at this location. He also stated that the drive to the north has the similar clearance distance. Uh, clearing the right of way at the creek would have minimum improvements with this issue, but not significant enough to meet the recommended clearance distance, which is 400 feet. Uh, staff did review the deed restrictions provided by Mr. Cockrell, um, as well as we did our own research um, for Oak Forest Unit 4, and it does not mention access to the golf courts from the residential lots, and those, those uh, deed restrictions were attached to your packet. Mm -hmm. uh, the comprehensive plan does state that the primary function of minor arterial roadways is for mobility and access being secondary. It also states that direct residential access onto major roadways are not recommended and that single family development should limit access to uh, major thoroughfares. This type of single lot development is consistent with adjacent development patterns that have occurred along Bill Owens Parkway. Although this does not pose a spot zoning issue, it is, it, it is not consistent with the goals of the comprehensive plan. Uh, the right of the municipality to manage and regulate land use is rooted in its need to protect the health and safety and welfare of its citizens. And I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. Any questions of staff? So Here. do you have a recommendation? Do not at this time. 
Angel, isn't that, uh, it, I know Restview is not a private drive, but it's further up towards the top of the hill there. Let's isn't see. it more susceptible to that issue than, there's got to be a lot a lot shorter distance there, yeah. visibility, than that driveway would be. I, I just don't think the, uh, the driveway issue is a, it's not an issue. I think we need to speak to the, the real reason we don't want to develop this lot. Okay. Any other questions of staff? Hearing none. The, of course, the public hearing is open and we would ask the general public, those in support and opposition. So those in support, would you like to come to the microphone and speak, please? Seeing none. Well, it, this is the time when people that speak in support or opposition, so we're calling for the support group right now. Okay? Seeing none, we'll move to the opposition. Who would like to be the spokesperson? Good evening. My name is David Wallen. I live at 3730 Ben Hogan Drive, uh, a few houses down from this piece of property. Uh, I joined Oak Forest Country Club in 1976. In the uh, four plus decades that I've been a member there, uh, we've had several ownership groups that have been involved in that. Uh, Mr. David Carlisle, the current owner, uh, is the individual that's trying to develop this particular piece of property. Uh, it's purely personal for me as a member of Oak Forest. Uh, I would hate to see a piece of our golf course go away. Uh, about six or seven years ago, Mr. Carlisle sold a section of our golf course, three plus acres that, uh, uh, that took away part of, our, part of one of our golf holes. That piece of property sits unused to this date on McCann Road. I'm afraid that a similar situation would occur here at this piece of property. Uh, like I say, it's, it's personal. Uh, as a longtime member, uh, in speaking on behalf of many of the members of, of the country club, we are, we are not in favor of Mr. Carlisle selling this piece of property and taking away part of our golf course. Two other items. Uh, a significant portion of this particular property is in floodplain, although I, I, I'm sure a home could be built there. And of course, the second item is, it's already been discussed, the, the safety issue of the access to a drive on that corner. Uh, and I, I guess we've addressed that and, and some other people have looked at that issue and I, I don't think there's any favorable remarks about being able to uh, safely enter, enter or egress that position. So uh, I am I'm opposed, personally opposed to uh, this change because this change would mean that that piece of property would be sold and, uh, and, uh, and part of our golf course would be taken away from us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wallen. Anyone else? Thank you. <clears throat> I'm Dave Harbor, 3704 Ben Hogan. One of the properties uh, directly affected. Uh, my wife is Robin Harbor, and I'm representing my neighbor, Randy Kennedy and Sally Kennedy, who's also going to be affected by this uh, proposed change if it goes through. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to briefly restate uh, some of the things I mentioned last time. Uh, one thing, of course, we're concerned about as property owners is this property has been zoned like this for about 40 years. We're property owners, we moved there, we had no idea someone would carve off a piece of it and sell it and block us off uh, from uh, our view of the golf course. So we as property owners right there, we feel like our property would be greatly reduced in value. And personally speaking, uh, our quality of life would be reduced because we spend most of our spare time in that backyard. And now we'd be spending time looking at another house probably. 
which we never expected could happen. Uh, the other big issue, of course, is safety. We've talked about that a lot. I'm glad to hear the city engineer or the traffic, traffic engineer's report, and uh, I agree with it. I estimated it was a little over 200 feet from the top of that hill to where that driveway would have to be. And uh, went by today and timed it just in my head. It's about two seconds from the time you get over that hill to when you can see when somebody would be pulling out. And if you're going 35, it would be real hard to stop. Uh, if you're going 40 or 50, like most people, I don't think it would be possible. So it's a very, uh, it's a dangerous situation. There's been one fatality, as we know, Ernie, and um, several other accidents right there at that bridge. Um, <clears throat> In closing, I'd just like to, for you to consider those things, the property value and the safety. And uh, just like to say that the owner who has been mentioned is uh, wanting to sell this for a profit. Uh, it's been in existence for 40 years with a special permit for a golf course. That's what he bought it for. And I say, let him keep it like that. He's uh, not a resident of Longview, and he's just trying to carve off what he can. And I respect your authority. I know you have the authority to make the decision to, to zone this as residential, but I'm asking you to use that same authority to leave it like it is and not change it. Thank you. Any questions of Mr. Harbor? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Harbour. Yep. Any other spokespersons? May I, may I readdress an issue? Yes, you may. Okay. Mr. Wallen. Looking at this area of view, what uh, the gentleman that made the presentation uh, showed <coughs> coming from here, coming from here straight down to here rather than what was sent to us that, that I, the, what I saw from the study was this view and that's not what I'm seeing what was presented earlier. I, just a question. I don't know if you can come back to the original. Uh, pre yeah, come back to the original pre-submission. Keep going. There. Yes, it's because the property on this back side is already actually zoned residential. It's actually zoned, if you look at this future land use map, the only request is this green part right here that's in the plan, within the plan development. This blue part over here is already zoned single family too. Okay, so we're not, we're talking about two different parts of the property here. Yes, there's two zoning categories over, this, over the golf course. Okay. Yes, sir. I was confused and, and I guess felt like I was misled. Okay, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Wallen. Any other spokespersons? Either in support of or opposition. This is the public hearing. This is your opportunity. Seeing none, does the staff have any questions? Madam Excuse Chairman, me, does the do the commissioners have any questions? Of Madam staff? Chairman, I have a letter I'd like to read into the record. Uh, the letter, letter is from Sergeant Chris Clark with the Longview Police Department. He functions as our traffic supervisor. And, uh, dear Mr. Carpenter, I spoke with Stephen Ha, who is our traffic engineer, about the section of the roadway we spoke about, and here's his response. He actually went out there and did a site survey and quote below is his response. I checked it in the field due to the curve and the hill on Bill Owens Parkway. The site distance on the driveway is only 160 feet. For a speed limit of 35 miles per hour, the design intersection site distance should be 390 feet. As a result, this is not a good location for the driveway. As far as the traffic crashes, I did research over 
last two years and haven't had any crashes in that area for the northbound traffic. However, there were a few that were southbound, but they had nothing to do with the hill or the curve, which would have been on the approach of the traffic traveling northbound approaching the proposed driveway location. I uh, hope this helps. If anything else I can do, please don't hesitate to ask. Sincerely, Chris Clark, Sergeant Lumby Police Department. Mr. Carpenter, can you please email that to staff so that they can put it on record? Sure. Thank you. Speaking of emails, uh, we did receive an email from Randy Kennedy, whom Mr. Harbor also represented in his comments. I just wanted yes, to make that matter of record. Commissioners? I have a question of staff. So if I'm looking at this correctly, the golf course itself is zoned single family? Yes, ma'am. So at any point, the owners of the golf course could take out a hole and put in single family and it would not have to come before us. That is correct, as long as they had, you know, access and yes, ma'am. They would have to have more than just, they couldn't just. I mean, they'd have to have access and to infrastructure, the, yes. Through the whole drill. They would not have to go through a rezone <coughs> request no. because it's already zoned single family. Yes, sir. Can you please come up to the podium, yes, sir? sir? Thank you. Thank you. Most of what you're seeing here with so SF2 is in the floodplain, so you can't build there anyway. Okay, that that is floodplain. Yes, and that is. That let is, me get to the map. Most of that, if that you look flood, here at our flood map, there is he the flood is correct. So Most you, of that is. So you're not going to be able to build there anyway, regardless of what it's what it's zoned. It is it is floodplain, and you can't build there. So Angela, on the floodplain map. Yes, ma'am. I'm I'm seeing the yellow part. So the yellow part is floodway, and he is correct. Nothing can be built in the floodway. And what about the blue the, annual chance? The blue you can build in the blue, which is the floodplain, as long as you build, I believe, two feet above the finished floor elevation. Okay. Yeah, yeah and I believe the blue is 500 year yeah. versus 100, 100 year. year. So it's yeah. it's a it's not as stringently regulated as the 100 year floodplain and floodway. Uh, you, and, and as Angela stated, you can build in the 100-year flood plain as long as you go through and, and show that you're going to be out of the flood plain, you're not going to create uh, adverse impact on the flood plain and meet um, all the statutory requirements there. It is my understanding that you cannot bring field dirt into a flood plain and, and build that up, so I, I, I'm not sure how you could build there. Correct. I mean, you can. There are instances, yes. and I believe the on the other side of the golf course, right. uh, that was a that was part of that was in the floodplain, and they did bring in, and I think went through the Lomer process, the letter of map revision process. So there there are ways that it can be done. Some of them are easier than others, but they still have to show. It's not just a administrative you know permit process. You know that's real quick and easy. So that's what they did on the can. I believe so. That's well, been yes. a number of years. Right. I, I believe they did have yes. to go through some of that process. And, Exa exactly right. And that is that. what they did on McCann Road. They 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 dug. They took the dirt silt out of the out of the creek to build up that piece of property high enough to get it out of the floodplain, which allowed them to bring in at that point in time. Then it was out of floodplain designation. It allowed them to bring in fill dirt for that piece of property which to the to this date still sits vacant for sale. unused there's a for sale sign yeah yes thank you thank you sir Angela, can you tell me a little more about the the plan development that on the property we're talking about what was it before it was that plan development yes so let me go back to the zoning map um, if you look at this PD, it was part of this Oak Creek Ridge subdivision, that PD 45, and um, because of this creek, they couldn't, and it really, I think they were going to expand it, it was going to be 
the original layout of Oak Creek Ridge, but spanning over this creek, but they managed, so it's stretched out a little, so they managed to make it fit um, so that it, they didn't have to traverse that creek because um, it would have been mm. expensive. Um, so this residue um, uh, right here was left over from that plan mm. development. And the plan development was designating it as cart paths only for the golf course? Or? No, it was actually, it was Oak Creek Ridge subdivision. Okay. It was Same part of Oak Creek Ridge subdivision. It was just stretched out more onto a larger tract of land, but they left this residual so that they didn't traverse that creek that was right here. And before that, it was actually zoned multifamily before okay. that. They zoned it from multifamily to a plan development. Thank you. If this were to get approved to be single family, what's the process of, of the builder, the homeowner, getting a permit to, to put a driveway cut onto Bill Owens right there? So they would have to apply for a permit through our engineering division, and then our engineering division would take a look at that um, to see you know, where the proper placement of that driveway would be. Would they have to have access, or can it be denied? They, they, Every lot is granted access. Is you know, it, every lot stands independent. That is but, correct. Yeah. Unless they, if they further resubdivided, then the engineering staff could say, if they took this lot and made it into two, staff could say, no, you can share a lot. You could share uh, a driveway. But as it stands right now, with one lot, they are um, required to. We're required to give them access. Did that answer your question? Okay. That's what they did down there at the end where um, the lawn runs into Hawkins Parkway right there. That's what they did there. They shared yes. the entrance. Yes, and that was actually something staff um, worked with that developer about, um, was sharing access um, along Bill Owens and along Hawkins as well. Commissioners, any other questions? Any other comments from staff? Any other comments from the public? Hearing none, the public hearing is now closed. We'll call for a motion. Motion to approve. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a motion, no second. Kills it. I guess we would assume it is tonight. That would yes. be for, for lack, lack of, of a motion, motion for approval. It would be an automatic recommendation for denial to council, which would require a yeah. super majority Supermajority. vote to overturn that. Yes. A super majority vote by council. Yes. Correct. Which is six out of the seven members. Okay. All right. We can move forward to the next agenda item. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. Oops. Agenda I'll, item I'll B. Go, I'll Let's, you, I'll okay, Michael, grab Pat. Um, a public <laughs> hearing will be held to consider application S19 03 filed by Tyler Grabber requesting a specific use permit, SUP, to allow for a convenience store with a drive through window at, uh, in general retail zoning district for abstract 129 H. McNutt survey, track 9, located at 1026 McCann Road. The applicant present. I think that would be you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Yeah, long trip. <laughs> Uh, my name is Tyler Graver. I'm at 1026 McCann. I have a can in Glencrest on the east side of the road, and we want to put a drive through window at the north side of our building. That's about all she wrote. You have any questions of the applicant? Thank you, sir. We'll call on staff. Thank you. The applicant is requesting a specific use permit for a restaurant with a drive through window in general retail zoning district. A specific use permit is required for drive through windows within general retail uh, to ensure no negative impacts on surrounding properties. Um, and as you can see in your packet and on the old, and on the zoning map, everything around it is zoned general retail. 
Um, the current business does sell tea and water, and those items will be sold through, sold through the proposed window. Uh, there is a drive through window um, across the street um, on the northwest corner of Glencrest and McCann and the southwest corner of Glencrest and McCann. Uh, staff does recommend approval of this request. I would be happy to answer any questions at this time. Is the restaurant and the drive through all in the same way the city looks at it? Yeah. Are you cooking? No, we're not yeah. So okay. anytime they any sell food, food any food service, goes all yeah. So that, yeah, okay. food Thank service. You. Um, so you know, any food service that requires an SUP, Thank you. or the drop-through window. I only have one question. Now, I hate to do this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Come to the okay. microphone, if you will. Yes, Looking at the pictures, yes, the amount of money you've already spent on this building, did you know you were going to have to come see us? No. Thank you. That's all I want to know. Looking at the traffic flow, it appears that if someone uh, comes in off of McCann, I, hello, 31, I guess we'll call that Spur 63. What is that? 61, 30, I'm 63, thank you. Uh, if they take a right and they'll go around the building to service at the window, then they come back. Are they gonna try to get back? Are they gonna have any problem getting back onto the Spur? Or are they gonna have to continue circling the building to go out on Glencrest? No, you can have, we have, I'm gonna I, you go can't really see it on there, but there's, there's a driveway right there that has an entrance point and an exit point. I mean, I pull in there every day and there's people leaving as I'm pulling in. So it's, it's big enough for two cars to fit. What she's asking is, are they gonna, they're gonna go back on the south, on the east, side, west side, they're gonna they ask back to McCann. They would have to circle around again if they wanna leave on Greencrest. Cause you're gonna put it across from Kmart. Your right. drive through is yeah. going to be on the side. My drive through, you see where the 29, the drive through window, 29 mm -hmm. feet? Mm -hmm. That's where the drive through window is. So when they exit, they follow those arrows, mm -hmm. and then they can either keep going all the way up to Glencrest, or they can exit right there at the bottom of the screen, and that's, that's McCann. Exit. Now, let me go to the aerial and I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Right turn is easy. Left turn out of there is going to be a little bit of a challenge. I'll make it every day, but yes. <laughs> Yeah, there's a driveway right here. Right there. Yeah. And then there's a driveway right And then there's right a driveway at Glencrest that you can circle yeah. all the way around, and then there's a light. So if you have a problem taking a left, you can go to the light yeah. and take a left. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, any further questions of the applicant? Any questions? Thank you. Any questions of staff? Have you done your report? I did, yes yeah, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> I was trying to remember, did I ask for it or not? Uh, hearing none, um, the public hearing, uh, is the, I, I believe there's no one here to speak in support or opposition, so we will uh, move right into um, calling for a motion. Move to approve. Second. We have two motions and two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, same sign. The motion carries, thank you. That's the end of our agenda other than- I uh, do wanna put on the record that item C was withdrawn even though it says withdrawn on y'all's packet. Um, when we posted the agendas, the applicant had not withdrawn the request um, at that time and so it was posted with item C on the agenda. So that item has been withdrawn. Okay, thank you, staff update. Um, all items that went to City Council, um, including the historic landmark designation, was approved. Congratulations. Thank you. Any citizen comments? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you for your attendance. We what? <laughs>